In the opening scenes, we see bright dots moving across the sky. Next we see a mess in the house. The tap in the kitchen is open. It was November 17, 1982, in Blue Hill County, Pennsylvania. Olivia and Ray Anderson returned home from the neighboring town. Since the door was open, they thought that a friend had come to visit their eight-year-old daughter, Maisie. However, neither Maisie nor her friend was at home. Everything looked as if someone else had been here. A year passed. Maisie is still missing. All the residents of their small town support the Anderson family as much as they can. Uncle Morgan noticed that someone clearly sleeps on the couch in the living room. Noah, Olivia and Ray's eldest son, confirmed that his father usually sleeps here, separately. The news reported that today, in honor of the anniversary of Maisie's disappearance, a memorial service was held at Blue Hill County School. Everyone believes it was an abduction. In an interview, Maisie's uncle and Deputy Sheriff Kenneth Burroughs said a few words about the missing niece. Everyone remembered her as a happy and cheerful girl. Ray turned off the TV. Olivia often enters the daughter's room. Olivia's sister, Arlene, reminded her that she is always there and ready to help. Later, the whole family and their close relatives ate pizza and chatted. Billy mentioned that he broke up with his girlfriend Jane, because they started having disagreements. Ray, Billy's older brother, called him a coward which Noah didn't like. A conflict arose between the father and son, and Noah left the table. This has been happening frequently lately. Olivia is tired of this. Since Maisie disappeared, their life has turned into a nightmare. Morgan shared with the brother that after the demise of his beloved wife Martha, he thought his life was over. But over time Morgan found the strength to move on. Ray didn't want to talk about it now. He will never come to terms with the fact that his daughter is no longer with them. Kenneth told Olivia that he had been searching for Maisie for a very long time. He couldn't sleep or eat. The uncertainty was the scariest thing for all of them. Now Kenneth feels like he let Olivia and her husband down. The feeling of guilt and helplessness will always haunt her. However, Olivia knows that Kenneth did everything he could. The family is taking the grief very hard. Trying to regain composure outside, Ray saw lights in the sky. The lights were getting closer, and soon it became clear that it was something resembling a spacecraft. Ray didn't quite understand what he had just seen. Suddenly the ground shook. Ray decided to go check it out, telling the others that supposedly the neighborhood boys were playing with firecrackers. The sheriff was going to call his colleague, but Ray assured that he could handle it himself. However, both Kenneth and Morgan intended to go with him. Billy joined as well. In the end the five men headed into the woods. Billy advised his older brother to talk to the son. Ray made it clear that he wasn't in the mood for heart-to-heart -heart talks. Noah and Morgan rode in the back of the truck. Ray stopped the car and told Morgan to stay with Noah. Kenneth and Billy went with Ray to deal with the situation. The Madison children, the neighbors, often disrupt public order. Meanwhile, the women in the house heard strange noises. The men wandered through the woods but found no one. Morgan and Noah realized they weren't alone here and locked themselves in the car. Olivia and Arlene felt an irrational sense of anxiety. When Arlene looked out the window, someone crashed into the glass. Meanwhile, something inexplicable started happening in the woods. It turned out a bird crashed into the window. At that moment, the men saw a flock of birds in the sky. There were thousands and thousands of them. The women saw it too. The car's stereo lights and other electronics turned on by themselves. Everything turned off after a few seconds. No one understood what was happening. It seems the car's engine broke down. A bright orange source of light appeared in the woods, which flew into the sky. Then a blue light came on. Ray who had a rifle with him, ran. When the light went out, Morgan disappeared. Ray rushed to his son to make sure he was okay. The question was only where Morgan had disappeared to. Kenneth began to have a panic attack. Billy hurried to take him to the car. While Ray and Billy were looking for Morgan, Noah stayed in the car with Kenneth who was still not himself. In the end they all had to leave without Morgan. At home seeing that her husband was out of it, Arlene asked the men what happened. Upon learning that Morgan was missing, Olivia tried to call the sheriff. Ray assured everyone that everything was under control, it was just their imaginations running wild. Olivia heard only static in the phone. While Ray went to search for Morgan, Kenneth said they had seen something unnatural. Ray felt fear when he realized he wasn't alone. This prompted him to return to the house. Hearing strange noises upstairs, they all went up and found a mess in Maisie's room. It was unclear who could have been here, and most importantly why. Suddenly all the electronics in the house started going crazy. Appliances turned on and off by themselves. At one moment everything just shut off, and an eerie silence fell. Orange and blue light flashed through the windows, blinding everyone. Ray realized the rifle wouldn't help him. No one made a sound. Suddenly the light began to flicker, and all the metal objects were drawn upwards. Everything in the house was walking around, objects were moving by themselves. Olivia covered her ears, unable to bear the oppressive sound. In an instant it was silent. No one had any idea what it was. The dog huddled in the corner and whimpered. 
Ray decided to let the pet out of the house. Ahead through the glass door, he saw something. The house was the safest place now, but for how long? Suddenly someone outside started pulling at the handle of the front door. There was hope that it was Morgan. Ray dared to approach the door, but he didn't see anyone. However, footsteps could be heard from above. Ray with the gun and Olivia went upstairs. Clearly there was something or someone in the ventilation. A storm began. Kenneth and Ray searched the house, concluding that unwelcome guests were in the basement. Kenneth had a baseball bat, and Ray had the rifle. The others were also searching the rooms. However, no one was in the house or in the basement. Seeing ash falling from the fireplace, Arlene tried to see in the reflection of the knife what was upstairs, while Ray slowly approached the open door leading from the basement directly outside. Suddenly a bright blue light lit up, after which the house began to fill with thick turquoise smoke. Arlene barely restrained herself from screaming. Ray disappeared without a trace, only his rifle remained. Billy ran upstairs. Someone was trying to get into the house, and Olivia started shooting. However this didn't stop the uninvited guests, whoever they were. The door began to open by itself, so Billy slammed it shut. Noah saw smoke starting to seep in from above. Something metallic appeared, and at that moment Olivia hurried to get her son out of here. She, Noah and Billy ran out of the house, the others including Arlene, disappeared somewhere. Billy grabbed an axe from the back of the car. They ran onto the road. Soon a car appeared. Billy tried to ask for help, but these people drove away. The mother and son hugged, realizing that the uninvited guests were the ones who took Maisie a year ago. Noah noticed that the stars were moving. Obviously they weren't stars at all. The lights were approaching swiftly. One of it hovered near Billy, Olivia, and Noah, then flew directly over them, joining two other objects. They began to move in an organized manner in the sky until faded far away. A police car arrived. Sheriff Reese Jordan and his colleague demanded an explanation. Billy and Olivia told them that someone had attacked them. Kenneth, Arlene, Ray and Morgan were kidnapped. The dog was also missing. Billy and Olivia couldn't say for sure who it was. The sheriff drove the victims to their home and instructed them to stay in the car until he and his colleague checked everything. The house was empty, shell casings were scattered on the floor. Electricity still hadn't returned, so Billy assumed the uninvited guests were still here. The police didn't find anyone in the house. Nothing was missing. Traces from five shots and knives in the wall raised certain suspicions. Clearly something extraordinary had happened here. The police interrogated Olivia, Billy, and Noah. It's hard to imagine that four adults and a dog disappeared without a trace within an hour. Moreover, no one saw the criminals. Olivia and the others refused to go to the police station. The sheriff promised to return within an hour with people who could do something about it. It would be better if Olivia didn't tell anyone about the lights in the sky and everything else, otherwise rumors would spread in their small town, which would negatively impact Maisie's case. When Noah finally fell asleep, Olivia helplessly looked at Billy. Near the police station, the sheriff and his assistant saw crowds of people. Everyone complained about the power outage at night, crop damage and other similar things. One thing united all these stories, bright lights in the sky. One of Reese's colleagues claimed she saw Maisie Anderson in that light. Billy fears that there may still be someone in the house. Suddenly he noticed the dog, which somehow returned. However, Billy's joy didn't last long, because a few seconds later the extraterrestrial light came back on. The door to Olivia's room spontaneously opened. Billy picked up a baseball bat. What was beginning to happen in the house violated all the laws of physics. While Billy rushed upstairs, Olivia was frozen in horror. Before her stood an alien entity. The bat fell out of Billy's hands. The creature touched Olivia's face and penetrated her subconscious. The aliens came to Earth from afar. Their planet is millions of light years away, beyond the Milky Way. Their world is alien and unlike anything else. Olivia found herself on the verge of two realities. It was dark in the house, only blue light was visible outside the windows. Suddenly Olivia heard her own voice, as well as the daughter's and husband's voices. Looking out the window, Olivia sees the fateful day when she and Ray left Maisie home alone. They were only planning to leave for a few hours. Olivia rushed into the daughter's room, seeing in the past Maisie drawing at her desk through the window. Olivia tapped on the glass and called out to Maisie, but she didn't respond. Suddenly something caught Maisie's attention and she left the room, heading downstairs. Olivia helplessly watched as her daughter prepared to open the front door. When Olivia did the same, she saw before her a hypnotic extraterrestrial spectacle. It turned out that on the fateful day, Maisie had opened the door not to aliens at all, but to her uncle Kenneth. Olivia was puzzled, as Kenneth had never mentioned that he visited them. And the sheriff's deputy was clearly not here to check on his niece. The walls of the house, built in Olivia's subconscious began to crack. Olivia watched as Kenneth, looking as though he was battling himself, turned on the kitchen tap and seemed to leave, but at the last moment changed his mind and went upstairs to Maisie's room. He closed the door behind him. 
Olivia realized the awful truth. All this time, the one she trusted was only pretending. The most terrifying evil turned out not to be an extraterrestrial civilization, but the close relative. Olivia's world is shattered. After what Kenneth had done, he made a mess as he left. Kenneth felt physically ill from his own actions, but there was nothing that could be done. Seeing her daughter in the blue light, Olivia couldn't hold back her emotions. Noah's voice made her wake up. All this time she had been lying on the bed in her room. The mother and son embraced. Ray returned home, as did Morgan and Arline. They are all now aware of what really happened. Seeing Kenneth on the ground floor, everyone went downstairs. Kenneth didn't even attempt to run, he was cowering in the corner, sobbing. Of course Arline didn't know the truth until this moment. She attacked her husband, and Morgan had to pull her away. There was a knock at the door, Sheriff Reese Jordan returned. Barely containing her anger, Olivia asked Kenneth where Maisie was. On the same day a full-scale search operation unfolded in the forest. While the family waited for news, the search continued. Olivia hugged Arline, realizing that she was not to blame for anything. Exactly a year ago, Kenneth hid the body in the forest. Recently upon seeing the bright light, he experienced a panic attack because the aliens returned him to that very day when everything happened. In the present, the body was found. No matter how securely Kenneth hid it, the secret became apparent. Unable to bear it, Sheriff Reese Jordan fell to his knees. He couldn't imagine that someone was capable of committing something so horrible. Christmas arrived. Reese gave an interview revealing all the details of this story. Olivia often looks up at the sky. Representatives of the alien civilization helped them learn the truth. Thanks to the extraterrestrial guests, whom Olivia calls angels, she was able to let Maisie go and find peace. Gradually Olivia and Ray began to grow closer again. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel not to miss more exciting new products. Also the authors will be pleased if you leave your opinion in the comments.